In terms of recruitment stuff, one of the things that we can do is set up what we call self-assessment tools. If we are trying to help people make a good decision about whether or not we are a good match for them, some of the things we talked about with realistic job previews in the, in the, in the previous little uh, video, we need a way for them to get to know the company. And some of the things that we can do is put up self-assessments online and um, have the self-assessment um, be totally anonymous, that only they see their results. Um, they see the results and then we would give them a, an assessment and say, you're a good match, these are the kind of characteristics we're looking for, you're maybe not a good match, um, you might want to think about you know, whether or not you want to apply for the job. You know, and the, and the point is, we do it so that we don't know who it is, but we want this to be completely anonymous um, and that we don't use it for selection purposes, but we give them a sense of whether or not they would fit in and let them self-select in or out, depending on what they want. So the goal of putting up those assessments is, is letting people know, hey, this is the kind of culture we have and why don't you take our self-assessment to see if you'd be a good match. And that sometimes attracts people to continue in the process. When should we communicate certain pieces of information to candidates and when should we delay? Um, we do want to be as transparent as possible, but at the same time, we don't want to be in a situation where we're withholding information that could be useful for people. So early in the recruiting process, the kind of things that you want to communicate are general information about the job and the company. Nothing detailed and specific, but broadly, what are the characteristics of the job? What are some of the expectations that we have in terms of what people should do? What is the company like? You know, what is our reputation? Um, et cetera, et cetera. Then, you know, again, as you get further and further in the recruiting process, you want to be sharing additional information. For example, information about the candidate's potential fit with the job duties. And so as you're pre-screening them um, and you're looking at them, maybe you're interviewing them at a, at a job fair on a college campus and you're sitting with them, talking with them, and it's okay at this point to say, you know, we think you're a good match. You have some of the basic skills that we're looking for, but we're going to do further assessments to see whether or not um, you would fit the position. Um, we have a number of candidates that also meet these criteria, so we'll be taking you all the next step um, to be assessed you know, more deeply. Um, as you get closer and closer to the hiring process and later and later in the recruiting process, you start giving them more information, more specific information about exactly who would they work for, who is their boss, who is their direct reports, who are their uh, subordinates, who are the peers, do they work with customers, what kind of customers, um, what advancement potential is there, um, what's the, how stable is the company in terms of turnover and things like that. We're going to start to share deeper information because we really need to separate those who are serious about staying with the company and those who are recognizing that this may not be a good match for them. In the end, towards the end of it, when we give them the job offer, our job offer is going to be very explicit about exactly what the job entails and exactly what kind of benefits um, the employee or the soon-to-be employee can expect. Every position that is going to need to be filled in the company needs a recruiting guide for the individuals who will be involved in sourcing and recruit and and attracting recruits to the to the company it's a formal document with the step-by-step -step procedure about what is going to be done what sources will use what's the timeline for things like that it addresses internal and external recruiting it's not just limited to external it also includes the internal process and you're going to have a separate section for internal versus external it's going to talk about the company policies relating to the job with respect to budget, um, how much money is going to be set aside for recruiting for this job, how much is a, is a salary range that we can expect to offer, um, what kind of activities we can expect to occur during the recruitment process, if it includes travel, what kind of travel is going to be involved, um, as I said, the timelines, who is responsible for things, who is going to be the person interviewing, who's going to be the person taking care of all the travel arrangements, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to have legal issues that we need to be aware of, making sure we recommend that we are EEO AA employers, that we do equal opportunity and affirmative action, um, that we, and also, you know, what, what can we expect at each step of the process in terms of our um, metrics and things like that. We want to make sure that we standardize our recruiting procedures because we want to 
to make it easy and consistent and legal. Um, obviously, position to position, we use different sources, but our procedure should be the same. We have a certain set of of things that we need for pre-screening a particular job. Then we make a decision about how we're going to bring people in um, for interviews or other selection assessments. Then we, um, you know, have them interview with their hiring manager and we and we take it all step by step from there. So we need to be really clear that we have a standard procedure that everybody goes through um, in, in a broad sense of the word. Obviously not everybody will do the same assessments because there are different positions with different KSAs requiring different um, assessments. Um, so um, we want to clarify which employees are expected to perform what roles during the recruitment process. Um, for example, you might have them involved in recruiting um, at, a, at a job fair or you might have them um, meeting separately with an, a potential applicant when they come for an interview so they can have a, a frank one-on-one -on -one conversation with current employees to learn more about it. So we want to be really clear about what those expectations are and make sure that we train our hiring manager and our, our uh, employees on how to make sure they are consistent in the things that they communicate to people and the way that they assess people so that we have a very fair, procedurally just fair system in place. The next four slides get at the EEOC best practices for recruiting. These are good rules of thumb, again, things you should remember um, to make sure that we are treating people and treating all our candidates fairly in the process. Um, we want to make sure we have a, uh, an established policy for recruiting and hiring, including what the procedures are, who's going to be involved in the process, making sure we deal with um, diversity and affirmative action initiatives and concerns. We want to have short-term and long-term goals and strategic plans in place. We want to make sure we're identifying barriers for, for EEO. For example, we want to look at um, the hiring rates, the selection rates, the um, stock statistics, the flow statistics, all those things, you know, for adverse impact and, um, and disparate treatment and making sure that we are removing any kind of barriers um, for people so that they can get equal opportunity or certainly believe that they're getting equal opportunity in the organization. They should be getting it, um, but we don't want to put any doubts in their mind. We want to make sure that we're clear about the firm's recruiting goals you know, in terms of diversity related issues, what the, um, the process goals are, what the outcome goals are, etc. Um, make a roadmap for implementing the plan. So you should have a step-by-step -step procedure in your timeline what you can expect. Other EEOC best practices include the following. Make sure that there's a good communication network um, so that you are notifying interested people of opportunities, making sure we're advertising well in the general media, making sure we're also doing affirmative action in our recruiting, that we are attracting non-traditional applicants, um, women and minorities who have traditionally been discriminated against in the hiring process. We want to make sure we're clear about our competencies, skills, and abilities and knowledge that we expect people to have um, and are needed for success in this position. We want to communicate if there's any sort of family-friendly or work-friendly work, uh, work friendly programs or, or work-life programs. Do you have daycare centers? Do you have um, um, elder care uh, services? Those sorts of things. Do you allow flex time? Um, you, know, uh, you know, job, you know, uh, uh, absentee day off banks, those kinds of things. Um, if there are um, transportation issues, like if you live, if your company is in a kind of a remote area, you might want to consider um, having buses to help people um, get access to the job. Um, so they have a central location where they're all picked up. They have to be there by a certain time, and then you can bring them in, transport transport them in, um, or making sure you help them with bus passes or things like that if it's appropriate. Um, participate in career and job fairs and open houses in the local areas, and so making sure that. Um, local colleges know that you're hiring um, and that you're broadening um, your pool of people, you know, all ages, all races, all sexes, etc. Um, work with professional associations, civic associations, and educational institutions to attract people with protected characteristics. So there are lots of organizations out there that have groups that are, you know, Women in Accounting or National Black Accountants Association or um, minority HR professionals or things like that. So go to those groups if you want to know more about um, how to reach diverse populations. Go to professional associations because they have um, access to those diverse populations. 
and even more best practices. Um, the EOC does a really good job of supporting, making good recommendations on how to be fair um, and, uh, and be within the law when it comes to recruiting practices. So additional things I recommend to help you to be an effective recruiter. Provide your recruiters, employees, and search firms with instructions to recruit diverse candidate pools. Um, so that should always be a consideration is how do we reach out to a broad base that is not necessarily going to be um, homogeneous. Um, we want to have a lot more diversity in our pool, so we actively have to seek that out. Partner with organizations dedicated to serving diverse groups. Um, again, have partnerships with the local AA, NAACP or a local college that you know is a historically black college. Um, anything that you know can help you to connect with diverse people. Um, use internships, work studies, co-ops, and scholarship programs to attract and pursue interested and qualified candidates. And so again, internships, work studies, co-ops, scholarships, that all comes through college campuses. So building a good relationship with local college campuses is really important. And that means community colleges as well as your four-year institutions, um, um, or, or even those institutions that are doctoral granting or you know master's level. Um, we want to make sure that we build a good relationship because the people who graduate from those colleges and are going to come and eventually work for my company later on. So building good relationships and helping to train them to be ready and then creating a pool of qualified labor for ourselves is a good idea. It's a win-win for everybody. Um, last one on this page, develop and support educational programs, become more involved with educational institutions that can refer a more diverse talent pool. Again, make connections with local schools. If you're only hiring high school graduates, you can do a college fair with high school graduate. I mean a job fair with high school graduates. If you're doing college hiring, then you want to do your job fairs with your colleges. You want to look at not just, you know, the big state school that has mostly majority people in it. You want to be looking at smaller institutions um, with niche populations, women's colleges. Um, uh, if you're in the Southwest, um, Native colleges, Native American colleges, um, they have a separate you know, separate pool of people, separate, you know, um, a system in place. Uh, you want to make sure you have, um, you know, uh, schools that are traditionally more Hispanic and areas that have heavy Hispanics. Um, you might want to recruit there as well. So um, all sorts of opportunities, historically bad colleges, as I've already talked about. These are all great opportunities for you to reach out above and beyond, you know, the school that has your biggest group of majority people in it and expand beyond those boundaries. Last slide, EEOC best practices, uh, the last four. Uh, ensure, that personnel, uh, ensure that personnel involved in the recruiting and hiring process are well trained in terms of their EEO responsibilities. So that's part of what we're doing here in this class is making sure you are practicing how to do those calculations for flow statistics and yield ratios, all those sorts of things because legal compliance requires us to make sure that we are um, using statistical analysis to show that we're using reliable and valid tools, that we are actively um, uh, uh, monitoring the hiring rates um, of different groups in our company, that we are uh, complying with the law, that we're following EEOC best practices for recruiting. Um, all of those things are incredibly important. Um, so everybody involved in the process needs to know what those legal requirements are. We want to become more involved in the community to improve our image to attract diverse candidates. So get involved in community activities sponsor clubs, uh, diverse clubs on college campuses. Um, be engaged in your local community. Eliminate practices which exclude diverse candidates or create barriers for them. So again, you need to be looking at the barriers for people and figuring out how do we solve those problems and how do we remove those barriers. Lastly, evaluate the firm's managers and the progress they make towards the company's EEO goals. So embedded in the performance plan for every manager needs to be EEO goals and diversity related goals. Um, and so that should be part of their hiring process.